Good evening and hello, Randomania fans and RPG fans, all those out there. My name is Dathos. I am joined here in the booth by Klopfer, and we have the wonderful Bad Karma and Rybon treating us in the background with a great race, the first of infinite, between the infamous tires McBain and Ty Banner. How you doing today, Klopfer? I'm doing real well. I'm super excited here to see the uh, the rope hunt there. We have uh, four Ogos and four Leviathans on our boss hunt. I think that'll be really interesting to uh, to uncover and see if our runners can get through this. Oh, yeah. oh no, wait, sorry. There's some slightly different bosses. My mistake. Oh, I don't... I, I was very much happy looking at the, the noodles and the note noodles looking back and forth at each other. But instead, we're getting our actual bosses. The one you see in the very top left, the one that everyone is unsure of, is the Fabul Gauntlet. We call it the Alt Gauntlet, so it can be any set of boss or enemies, so that's why it doesn't have a very sick type. As well as, honestly, kind of a gauntlet of uh, rudeness here. We have CPU, which is always fun without the back row glitch. We have Wyvern, which is, you know, Wyvern. And Evil Wall, you know, probably, depending on where he is, the worst of them. Uh, but all of these bosses are gonna be fun for this starting edge. Yeah, really nothing here is too much, too easy here. Everything's going to be a little tricky, but we do have that starting edge, which is a good set of power, at least for that early part of the game. So if you do run into some of these definitely ruder bosses early on, at least you do have that powerful character to help you get through that. So runners have that going for them. Uh, but yeah, running into any of these in later game spots is, is a pain. Yeah, and it really depends on what spot you find them at, like the areas or where you can find them in different sections. Uh, you can have it so that these bosses will have a very high level of gerrymandering towards one level of a party versus another, mages versus fighters, for example. It really depends on what you're finding. If we see a lot more mage heavy, it's going to be less fun towards seeing CPU, uh, sorry, uh, towards see seeing CPU anywhere. If we have more melees, then we're going to have a good time with uh, our jumpies, if we can find that. But Edge kind of just gives you a bunch of power just for these overworld. Yeah, definitely, at least for those early parts. And I think, I think you're very right as our runners, you know, go through picking up their characters, either do that early or maybe a little bit later in the sea. Without a doubt, these bosses are going to be in their mind for, well, who do I still need to add to my party to be able to get through this? Or do I already have ways to get past all of these bosses, especially if they show up later in the, uh, in the run here? Yeah, and what really is going to depend on is what kind of loot we see here. The not having the T Wildish that our other side of the brackets or other side of the tournament is like the T Wildish, you definitely notice that disparity. But the bonus is of coming in with a edge that's fully kitted out, meaning that you generally don't really worry about the overworld. You're looking for a dagger or two that'll make him do okay, and a Sid that'll pair with him very nicely to deal with anything. Uh, yeah. And there's our underground access. So yeah, we have everything we kind of need. Yep, I mean, we could immediately head down to that underground, but we do have multiple checks we can do over here on the overworld, as well as what looting do we want to do? Because, uh, yeah, Edge does come fully equipped, but those short swords, as you noted, they're, they're not the best. It'd be nice to get some extra weapons on them. And Sid could definitely use a nicer weapon, and there's a handful of stuff you can find here on the overworld for that are pretty significant upgrades. Yeah, any level of a healer just kind of takes this party and rounds it out nicely. Oh, it's, it's kind of what you're really looking for but yeah this is with the fact that we also do not have the free key item flag on and especially with this edge this is probably one of the gambits that a lot of players like to go for we're looking for ourselves a dms we're looking for just bosses that we can take in uh hello All right. out the hop uh easy <laughs> couple of swings and this guy's gone really nice to go ahead and you know that wyvern can be mean so nice to find him just a really easy to take on spot get a uh, boss done right there and don't have to worry about running into that wyvern much later on Ooh, and mcbane picking up a long sword their uh treasure inside the miscave there is pretty here high quality and we can see he can get some good stuff and a long sword will definitely help him get through a handful of bosses that much faster yeah, it's really interesting seeing runners do certain cheeky looting checks, like for example that one there uh, versus some of the other items. These chests here, especially in what are known as lone, what we call lonely or out of the way areas, we kind of loot them a little higher so that you can get the chance. Oh, and there's one of my favorite characters to see. Uh, we are always a big fan of the bard to rock us out with a good party. Uh, but to continue what I was saying, you're kind of looking at some of these areas that's. Um, 
that's going to be like, oh, there's not really anything here besides this basic stuff. So you kind of want to give a little bit of a bonus to them. So we've rated some of the, the loot higher. Uh, speaking of something that's rated higher, usually you want to see this in a much worse spot, but uh, free. Yeah, the, the rando randomizer, the rando gave us that nice wyvern and an easy handle spot, but then also wastes the water hag on another easy spot. So a very easy boss to take on pretty much anywhere. You like to see it show up later, but hey, we'll just get it here. Yeah, and McBain doing just a quick little loot with the Edward. The nicest thing I think I saw there was probably that Blizzard Spear if we find a cane. Nothing. Ooh, but we do have. I didn't even realize we do have the Mega Man sprite for Sid. So I mean, we got some good stuff already. Uh, we have well, Adamant Rock. That's not progression, and that's luggage. So kind of zonks all round. Yeah, although Rex Baron does value at least the key item, it looks like enough to want to go ahead and walk this out. Uh, first step, or well, I guess second step here towards our 10 key items. So let's hold on to that. And yeah, but just finding our uh, Dr. Chuck box there, we don't need to take him on, so no reason to go ahead and do that fight. And a Rydia, always nice to see. Potentially could be a very good anchor for the party, or if you do find some of those nice summons, you might want to get levels on her. That's where we have the bit of the problem, is do we have the ability to find them anywhere, or are we going to have to buy them? We definitely need to... Ch it, it's, there's options for where we can find them, and it's that'll dictate whether this Rydia stays in the party, or whether we make her an anchor, or whether we, as uh, one of our one of our uh, lovers of the bard will say, yeet her into existence, or out of existence. McBain going and setting up the hovercraft for heading into Eplin later and swinging by Mysidia to check out some more characters, really giving us a view here of who's in the seed. There is that cane to make use of the blizzard spear that was found. And do we get our healer here? Uh, we get a type of mage, a punch mage. So we have both best boys found. I'm <laughs> very much happy with the seed that our lovely restreamer Bad Karma has made. Yeah, this is definitely an interesting set of characters here. We have a lot of attacking. We can do a lot of that right now. And that's mostly it. Yeah, and we have all the things that we need kind of for these characters to really succeed sure. too. Uh, the Fire Claw meaning that Yang's going to have two different, <laughs> or two of the Elemental Claws. Uh, we've got the ability to, you know, let Sid hit things with decent axes. And we also have a Blizzard Spear, again, keen to do really good damage. Uh, answered in chat, yes, that was uh, Valet Fabul, so not a hard fight to deal with, especially when you find this cane, but just something like that can go in, and maybe we'll come back later. Talking about cool. having everything this party needs to uh, work well, Rex Banner finding Rosa, a white mage. That's the last thing this party really needed to come together, and definitely will be, I'm sure our runners will be very happy to see that both of them. Yeah, you kind of have really what's necessary to make this party fully jive and you know what no why'd you get rid of the other good anchor why'd you get rid of the you know the proper anchor uh, so just saving eddie will be it would be slingshot he'll stay there at that low level because we sent him away so later on we'll just we'll pick it back up and get to those really high levels that you want to see on him that that's all that mcbain's thinking here i'm sure i a hundred percent missed this where did mcbain find that leviathan I miss that as well, but that is a huge pickup and definitely is interesting because this party you look at and think maybe you want that Rydia to be your anchor, but that Leviathan, that's a lot of power, so you might want to get those levels so she can actually start casting that at level one. She doesn't have the MP for it. Yeah, and I 100% agree with McBain here. Uh, see, first of all, we have yep. Vanilla on, uh, on Rex <laughs> Banner's side, so I'm 100% here for this. And BK, if you want to keep flirting with me, I'm 100% okay with this. Uh, but m making great use of these, the starting siren, getting Rydia some HP, or some HP and some MP, meaning that she can just kind of wash away any of these bosses right off the bat. Yeah, and chat saying that was just picked up on ordeals, so Leviathan was just sitting here ready for her. And yeah, definitely getting these levels to make use of that should make all the boss fights here really fast for McBain, so definitely great use here of Sun. Yeah, this is where we start getting to the point where not having the Rydia could have been a could be a really uh, bit of a detriment. I know she can do a, she can do the work that's going to be necessary, and she's going to be doing the she's she and Edge are going to be doing the heavy lifting in this seed. Uh, you're going to be having Edge do a lot of the early boss fights, and Rydia is going to be doing anything that's multiple. Uh, 
Uh, unfortunately, this is not one of them, and this is actually the only fight that punishes not checking characters. Definitely is a painful one, and experiment. unfortunately having to take the first fight again here, because again, you, you think with having that edge, hey, you have a sniffing amount of power, you're fine, you just walk in there, but yeah, that, uh, that play gets really mean there. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty... It's gonna be really telling to see how this part goes out. This is gonna make a big difference in how quick... Yeah, look at that. Yep. One, We have one little wave of jump from Kane, and we already have the Oh My Body on the Mylon. Uh, I'm curious to see how fast, how much longer that plague's gonna last. Yep, definitely. There we go. We can see Rex Mayer, in fact, even using this fight to set up for the next one here, knocking down Sid. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to be doing this with low uh, party yeah. members and low power, this is the way you have to do it. Plague, he will constantly cast count on you, and if his script is, do you have count? If answer is no, recast count. So you, you can catch him in a loop 100%. For... Wow, even McBain is saying, I yeah, might that... change things up. <laughs> That edge in the center slot, just having such you know high agility there, is going to and the count will come up on the back row attack. It's just going to make things so painful for those both these parties, even with the full character setup. Uh, that and since especially McBain looked like he'd already in that stave, just go ahead and eat the reset and get in here and make this pit so much safer and so much easier. Yeah, and also I big shout out to the fact that if you look at the screen, the numbers are counting uh, down to <laughs> 60, 50, 40. Uh, just a little like, things about certain back attacks in sections, and it kind of makes me chuckle. Uh, Odin here is really entertaining, if you've never seen that. Uh, yes, the Odin fight is definitely a fun one. It's being just going straight for the kill here, not going to take advantage of knocking down a character and picking them up, which we see Rex Banner doing on the right side here. But yeah, Leviathan is... does do a good amount of damage, so. Yeah, I think a hit or two might make it so that Plague will go down from the Leviathan. It should be doing... Ooh, yep. yeah. Ooh look at that. All the zeros, getting it going. Uh, but yeah, this is where, one, it's going to be just nice having the... The extra characters are making such a great work. And Kane himself also doing uh, a lot of damage because the throw element which is on every one of the spears also makes it so that you're doing bonus damage to Plague, who is a flying monster. So he and Rosa can if you get them good weapons early kind of put up more damage than expected. Yeah, yeah, spears and bows being able to do good work there against Plague so definitely a way to get through there. And so if you have the DPS, just go ahead and just straight attack get through. Uh, and if not take the approach Rex Spanner's doing here which is knock down your own characters life them back up. As you were saying, Plague sees someone without the count on them, he'll just cast count again. And nicely done there by Rex Banner getting through Plague in a pretty nasty uh, spot for early game. Uh, didn't quite see what the boss with the <laughs> item was in there, but uh, I assume it was a big zonk because that was a McBain saying, you know what? No. No, oh. I don't need to watch the rest of this. We're, we're good. We're done. Oh, already had that Leviathan. <laughs> uh, I think that means that... So this yep. is actually really good for uh, Rex Banner to pick up because he doesn't have the Rydia, doesn't know Rydia's there, and did not loot that one chest on our deals that gave Leviathan. So, I mean, we're just going to have a free Leviathan summon. So I expect him to take this and walk it out and then go check some more characters. Yeah, find out which characters are in the seat. And Big Bane swing over to the bull. Also, we'll find out Val is here. And see if he's willing to take on this fight. And yeah, as chat noting, with Kane, much more likely to take on the fight. Yeah, oh, and if we had the back row glitch, that dwarf axe would be very, very tempting. Uh, it is also tempting just to utilize for Sid for anchoring purposes. Yep. Lowering agility, even by five, especially at these levels, kind of big. So you can take him through the underground, have him be your anchor, and have Rydia just kind of wash away whatever's there. Yeah, uh, if, and if you're also willing to just keep sit down for most of the game, minus five agility on him will actually leave him as a pretty good anchor so for most of the game, as long as you just don't allow him to gain any levels, because if you want to go ahead and let that Rydia keep leveling up, so she can keep doing you know, your Leviathans, maybe Lake can go towards Nuke, 
you need your anchor somewhere. So, and without a curse ring on hand, Sid's a really good choice for that. He very much is. Also, uh, after a comment in chat uh, was said that the Fabul monks look like hockey players, as a Canadian, I can't believe that I've never seen that before. Also, big shout out to, with that said, however, let's talk about going up for these ordeals. Sorry, with that, how, with that said, however, is in fact the person who said it in chat, and I am 100% <laughs> the fantasticness of that name, by the way. Yeah, as you mentioned here, Kane just kind of doing Kane jumpy things. We have Jump Man, we have Jump and Shoot Man, and we have Leviathan kind of just doing Leviathan things. And getting through the fight nice quickly, so we'll get to see another KM here. Or Rex Banner is heading over to the Baron Inn to show us the boss and waiting for us here. Wait, Oof. where's my character? Who, what the, why is there a pig there? Did and, they, and they the character a pig? Oh yeah. Uh, must yeah, must have already just had the P status of on them. So no, we don't get characters in there on. If you've seen any other the uh, any uh, the rest of the turn up to this point, you'll know those characters are not available on this flag set. Uh, well, so what's we have like that uh, specifically makes that happen? Piggy, I actually have no idea. Uh, it's actually one of the new flags that we're debuting for this tournament called See No Earned. Any character in an earned character spot, such as you have to fight for them or you get them through a key item, are actually replaced with pigs. And there is, in fact, an entire piggy meta, depending on what color their ears are and the snout is. You occasionally get a ghost piggy, too, which is entertaining. It's definitely fun. On Rex Banner's side, we did see another free boss being taken out of the pool. Again, another very easy location, so unfortunately to see that. And Bahamut here in our seconds. Yeah, these are bosses that are in mid-HP, low-HP spots that Bahamut is kind of more of an annoying boss than difficult, no matter where they are. So you're very okay with them being here. Uh, you also are just getting a Dragoon Gauntlet for your purposes. <laughs> Again, Kane's gonna like that. Yeah, Aside I mean that you're uh, you're not you've, finding any other key items on the overworld, Broham. Yeah, you've already done all your work there to get through the fight, and yeah, King can put it on. So, yeah, I guess keep it. Don't reset it. Also, one of the things we like to comment upon when we find oh, Halo Phil is still summoned too. That's that's a nice pickup. Uh, but one of the things we like to call when we uh, when we have miss misses on um, getting key items or where those spots go as blanks. Uh, is that, that's what we like to call it, either bonks or zonks or blanks, and uh, BK and I both being proponents of making sure that as many blanks as possible can be rolled in the overworld, uh, we have named ourselves the dubs of the blank bros when it comes to seed rollings, and it's pretty fantastic. That man, definitely living up to the name here. We did not find a lot on the overworld here. The hook right out of the gate, and an admin rock, which, well, it's key item, but it's not really helping on progression much. Yeah, and honestly, this is kind of what I enjoy seeing. I am a big fan of nothing? to go underworld nothing? underground with nothing. You want stuff? Uh, go find it somewhere else. Yeah. So it's true. We really haven't found a lot, so we didn't get a chance to say get a ton of experience. Although we have been pretty fortunate here with not spending a lot of time looting, but still finding some pretty good stuff. Uh, that longsword is at least one piece of weapon there on our edge, and that Leviathan summon is a pretty big deal. So depending on just who the bosses are guarding that hook route, we might very well have the power to get through there quickly. But there is also just the Eplum Castle right there to go ahead and loot to try to find some more stuff if we want both better items as well as some more experience by taking on the trap chest. Yeah, I think no matter what you're doing, unless you have a party that's just completely power overwhelming, you're going to be looting Eblin, especially here in the Red Moon brackets. You're looking for the power, you're looking for something to get you through, and... Like, Rydia does the job, she's okay at it, but what we need to be looking for is maybe an Excalibur throw at this point, maybe a Crystal Sword to sell for some money, possibly a White Spear or a Dragoon Spear for this game, or even a Defense Sword, to be completely honest. You're just looking for a little bit more power disparity, and Evelyn Castle is where a lot of it can come from. It's just so dense with treasures and just such a high tier. Yeah, exactly. As well as, as you kind of know, just getting that, even if you don't find the items you need in there, just getting a ton of stuff to sell. Uh, the Evelyn uh, 
cave, those shops can have some really good stuff too. So just being able to have a lot of money on hand to buy what you need to get through the uh, the hook rope can be very useful. Also, one of the one half of the bros is saying, "Fiery hammer, let Sid bonk things." Uh, I'm a hundred percent here for Super Smith giving something for one of our characters, as opposed to every other time when you, <laughs> see, when you don't see an Edward, you get like a requiem harp, which just is like, well, that's disappointment, but it's also entertaining to see. Yeah. Yeah, this definitely is a party where if you do get that super smith early on, you're probably going to go ahead and check it because you could get a lot of power there to then burn through the rest of the seed. Yeah, and it's really nice to again see all these characters. Um, the the lack of characters and seeing the semi divergence you have here is always very interesting to see who takes what. And I am very curious as to see if Rex Banner will basically mirror the parties here, which is a very high possibility. Yep. Or if we're going to see something, like maybe we'll see the Yang being kept in, we're going to have the Sid put down, or we're going to have the even the King be put away, because he doesn't need to be there, but it could be always good to just keep him around. Yep, I did see that cell there on Leviathan, on Rex Banner's side, but just one of the two orbs, so it does look like he did pick up the uh, first orb on Ordeals as well. Yeah, so there's that little benefit. Uh, we also see a bit of a gear swap here, so that McBane can get better power out of this flame here. The Assassin Dagger, really good for agility manipulation and great if you can get to knock things down quick enough, but it lowers your intelligence, which makes your magic does less damage, so it's not what you really want to do when you're, you know, trying to cast fire. And it does look like Rex Banner has set up a different party here. Uh, I believe he did keep the Eddie. So I am a huge fan of Eddie Strats. Uh, there is still again. Let's look at some of these bosses that are here. Oh, like, oh. like you've got you've got yourself Odin. You've got yourself Evil Wall. Have you ever seen Evil Wall smack himself to to death in the King Queen Evelyn spot? I know I have, and it's entertaining. Yeah, that very well could be going. What's going through Rex Banner's mind here is looking at this boss list, going. No, I think he's going to have some uses. Let's keep him in the party here and going ahead and keeping keeping hold of him. So. Yeah, you get yourself a little bit of uh, a little bit of a blink going on. You get yourself with the ability to have him hide, and you got Eddie Thunderstruck strategies, which I'm yeah. always here to watch Eddie shine. Uh, but yeah, as we mentioned, we have one of the first chests down. We have a, I say just a, but it's still great for this Rosa to give her some power. Uh, yeah. We have a white shirt for her. And the second trap chest, the Black Cat and Lamia one, which is, yeah, I have very much agreed to wash these ones away. If you let any of them get a counterattack off, you're not going to have a good time. However, we are going to see some good items while we have Rex Banner going back to the pool to take care of the defense. Yep. Now, having that cane in his party, feeling like he can go ahead and take this on, so we'll come back here and check out the item here. And for our second chest, a Zeus Gauntlet. So, hey, some good extra power here for swinging. Yeah, this is letting Edge kind of take over the show, which I mean, lets him kind of get back in the power disparity of Rydia. Yeah. Won't be doing as much, you know, hurt to everybody. Uh, by the way, speaking of doing a lot to everybody, how would you like a free fight that can just be taken away in one single shot? Always good to just have the ability to get that done. Yeah, that's an Odin. You are a big <laughs> fan of it. Also, uh, as chat's kind of pointing out, or by our tracker Rybon, uh, how would you like to throw that on Rydia just so that she can slap things around? <laughs> no. While it we, have, we have Leviathan, so probably not, but but sure, it is a thing that can be done. Yeah, well, unfortunately, while in uh, while in Kidia form, she cannot wear it, but the second she does the glow up to adulthood, she can put on the Zeus Gauntlet. You give her a Dragon Whip, you give her a Heroin Robe, you give her Zeus Gauntlet, she's gonna maybe do 70 damage. Uh, if you need to just scramble your eggs for your levels. Great, yeah, that's set up. But yeah, probably most of the time you're not going to want to do that. Uh, we see here the Medogre chest. Uh, one not quite as susceptible here to being just Leviathan down as they have very high magic of Ethan. Yeah, this is the one time where you're looking for anything that is of mage killing because these are not only the ogres, so you have the giant uh, ability to deal with them, you also have the fact that you can use mage killing weapons to do bonus damage and you just kind of do what this, you know, uh, we have Edge doing, doing a bunch of damage with a crit, but that would be like his normal shots. Yeah. And we can see here Life Potion being tossed out, get some extra experience here from getting these fights done to get ourselves set up for the hook crit. So 
life potion being thrown on an enemy that's died basically brings it back to life and gives it as much HP uh, as multiple of its vitality, which for all enemies is zero, so it just dies again and you get the XP. Of course, these Mad Ogres choosing a level of violence against Best Boy and just kind of knocking him down so he gets no experience. But Kane, again, has the Ice Sphere. It's going to be giving him enough damage to get through it. I, I mean, Rydia can wear that. And, and that's, uh, you know, something. Got some good defenses. So, yeah, sure. He, he'd you'd like to get... better? Okay. Yeah, you'd prefer it to actually maybe Leviathan hit more, which it won't do. It gives you your white magic casting stats. That's a white shirt, by the way. Uh, but it, it is endgame gear, so the defenses on it are very high. So. This is very true. Uh, also finding, again, the loot here being kind of, again, good, but kind of average for these areas. Uh, you're really looking for, again, something to give a better axe for for yeah. the Sid or for this cane, because right now again the Blizzard Spear, as good as it is, you're kind of just like it's mid tier gear, and we're looking for something to carry edge into the late game. Yeah, this is well, very much where you were hoping to find your late game gear, so you wouldn't have to continue looking in other places, wouldn't have to keep looting, and we see McBain here going to continue looting here to try to find some better items. Yeah, and again, this seed has been very rough when it comes to the items when it comes to giving your mages stuff perfectly fine <laughs> when you've got your your two bruisers that are like can i have something uh no you can have these coffins that's really about the only thing that uh we have that we can give and yeah it's it's kind of telling when we look at uh seed and some flags that kind of more help these uh fighters and the mages are really benefiting well, if you did not happen to find any of the Leviathans up to this point, they are for sale here in the Elven Shop. But fortunately, we found multiple of them. And you know you what? Know? I am 100% okay with seeing that gun. That, yeah, that hesitation by... Yeah, exactly. It's, 100% it's, agree. It's expensive. But, hey, that's a good weapon. That's one that you can just go, all right, I can use this to the end of the game. It's not the best spear, but it's a good enough spear. Uh, train spears are also definitely tempting with that edge, as something you just dart out to get through uh, again kind of these mid-tier bosses. And the nice thing is, is even if um, even if we do find a better spear for this cane eventually, uh, mm -hmm. the nice thing is, is that can still be thrown by edge, yep. so you're going to be doing uh, more damage than what you may think. So it, it it has a dual purpose. It will allow this cane, this uh, edge to hit the back row without having to worry about anything or having to use any of his own MP. Uh, but yeah, we have the Staleman chest, which low XP, but you're not here for the XP. This is a, this is a loot chest. Yeah, just really hoping to find something good out of this one. Uh, not as high tiers as the Evelyn Castle uh, trap chest, but still has a chance of maybe finding us something good. Uh, and Rex Banner did not go through Evelyn Castle, so he does not have the either the experience or the items from those trap chests. Oof. Just, just a rune ring, ring, which we found for free somewhere. But however, yeah. that's still really good. That means that Rosa, if uh, with McBain's side, Rosa and Rydia are both protected against any of the mage-type enemies we have coming up. Which, uh, we have Asura for one, we have the guards at Baron for another, and then eventually there is the fact that we could see a... Uh, oh, there's an Asura actually speaking of. Hey, we have two <laughs> white mages on our team. One and a third? One and two thirds? Uh, depending on how you do yeah. one in zero thirds. <laughs> yes. But yeah, we have more than one white mage at this point. Uh, speaking hey. of Baron guards. As well as, we did have those coffins for sale, and so those are definitely going to help us get through that uh, that boss fight. Yeah, this is this is a hook route that, with the way that that Evelyn shop shaped out, we are getting a very free run. Uh, and honestly, as much as I love seeing some rude bosses in areas, this is not where I want to see them. Save them for later. Let's let's get some of the roughness later, yeah. man. Let everyone get underground, keep exploring the rest of the seed, and then surprise at the end, all of these really rude bosses can show up then. Yeah, and both runners deciding that they're done with looting. Yeah. They don't care what's here. And there is still one more trap chest that we can find before going underground. So that's kind of interesting i thought maybe they'd go and check this spot too just for something else but the fact that they're both kind of like ignoring this is 
very interesting and very telling. Yeah, I believe it's once they cite it that the boss at the end of the hook route is something they can just take on with the coffins they already bought. They're feeling, okay, don't need any more power. We are likely at a sufficient level to get through this and get through this quickly. Let's go fast and just keep moving. Until, of course, as Rybon's doing is surprised, we get Evil Wall at the King and Queen Devil spot. Uh, probably strong enough. There are some mean bosses that can show up at that first boss spot. So even if that uh, that does show up, you have an edge on Rex Banner's side that just says, okay, I'm just gonna hide while you guys just take all the beats. And yeah, like that Evil Wall will hit hard, but Eddie's just gonna be like, yeah, okay, and do his own thing. Uh, but McBain on his side is saying, hey, uh, let's get Rydia powered up, let's give her the suite of summons, and she is in fact the biggest little caller in all of the Blue Planet. <laughs> now we'll have to see if we do end up getting that rude boss here, or... Uh, Arguably? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I mean. Uh, so this spot is, well, it, it can punch pretty hard, and Mom Bomb likes to punch, and when Mom Bomb explodes, it punches more. So, oof, definitely, definitely one of the brutal ones we can run into. Yeah, but it's not even that bad because we do have the option of if um, if McBain had learned that Odin, we can just kind of slice through the little bomb. Yeah, that's a quick reset if I ever saw one. You, know, <laughs> you may even want to like heal. I this is the problem with having burned those elixirs early. Rydia has no yep. MP now. Yeah, and uh, one elixir left looks like. But yeah, so. Elixir's a way to get your MP back, otherwise you kind of need that camping gear, which you don't start with, so you actually have to go shopping for it, and I don't believe we found any of it, or at least didn't buy any of it. Yeah, a uh, comment from Rybon who's saying that uh, Leviathan and Dart is enough. I, yeah, that's gonna be, if you can get sure. through it fast enough and not have to worry about this, and the only thing you have to worry about is the explode, you, again, good shape is what you're looking for. Yeah. Rex Manager again, just going to throw the Zeus Rage to get AoE damage and just clean up all the bombs before they start swinging, because you don't want them to get those attacks in. No, we are not here for that. Uh, we are getting the little bit of slow, but the healing of Sylph. Damage of Virus with a little bit of healing on everybody, you're gonna be very thankful for that. Um, and it's nice that we are getting, yeah, Rex Banner is saying, nope, I don't care what this is. This is free. Uh, we're just going to go right into it. Yeah. Uh, I believe did set battle speed all the way down just to make sure he can do exactly what he wants to, which is maybe get some coffin and some light glitches set up here. Oh, absolutely. There's no reason not to with uh, a fight like this. Well, especially with having skipped going through Eplin Castle, Rex Banner is probably hurting for that experience. So being able to just get some more will be very nice. Uh, and looks like his goal is to keep Eddie here as his anchor as the life pot goes out, and then uh, Kane will be knocking Eddie down. Yeah, this fight is all sort of done for Rex if he really wants to again. He can just summon a Leviathan and call it done, uh, or even just utilize some more of the, as I said there, uh, even utilize some of the coffins. But again, wanting to save resources, uh, even with a little bit extra HP that top one's got. I really hope he puts himself down. There we go. <laughs> there it is. He cleans up the fight by himself. Yeah, the majority of the experience comes from just the officer there. So if you kill him with the coffin, throw out the life potion, you already got a lot of the experience you're going to get from this spot. And then just, yeah, clean up the rest of the fight as fast as you can to get to your underground in eh, just a bit over 30 minutes. Yeah, and for an overworld as low of power as this one, yep. that's, that's not bad. You're okay with that, really. Yeah, definitely a good time, because yeah, as you're saying, even we did see a lot of looting happen, at least on McBain's side, and the Leviathan we found early was probably the only really strong thing. Yeah, uh, not a problem for finding that Leviathan, again, with how many that were there. Um, but yeah, that is, again, we see dolls at the top of the tower. Uh, I'd be kind of tempted to take care of that, especially with the Leviathan summon. You can kind of just wave your way through things. Yeah, although it isn't one of our bosses that's part of the boss hunt, and it is a bit of a walk to the top of the tower, so I can see some incentive to maybe check other locations out first, especially if you could stumble onto that tower key and thus get the single dip into tower. So, yeah, you might want to take that on, but I think the question is when do you end over there? 
Uh, I would still do it probably soon-ish. Like, yeah, you, you kind of want to do the single dip with the tower and the key. If but possible. at this point, yeah, if possible. But with how easy that is with what you've got, again, you've got a Leviathan, you've got an edge with um, uh, with an assassin dagger. Go look for maybe an hourglass to find or something underground. And then just kind of take that fight. Like, I go shopping, then go take that fight. Yeah, definitely as well as just getting your shopping done kind of lets you know a little bit more about the sea. For example, are sirens available or do you maybe want to steal some while you're in the tower? Uh, do you have those hourglasses to make sure the fight is safe? So, yeah, getting a little bit of shopping done first could be nice. And McBain also underground here at 32 minutes, which again, still very good time, especially given that extra looting he did. Yeah, the extra looting, the extra pull through of Eblin. Uh, definitely, yeah, making it so that they're through it around the same pace. Roughly similar levels, too. So you're kind of, you're uh, not really saddened if you're either one of these runners right now. And yeah, looks like we have set up for Dwarf Castle. I'm here for this. It's very, very good. Yeah, as well as, again, we do still have a lot of bosses in our boss hunt uh, up for grabs, so going and checking the spot that has two unknown bosses in it is very appealing. Yeah, two bosses, one key item. Just get this out of the way. This is a spot where if you can get your way underground, you're not really worried about anything, so just, yeah, kind of go. Yep. And speaking of boss hunt, so we have the eight there, which we're looking to take on seven, but here's the other boss we like running into. Yeah, so this is a nice little freebie now. A nice little uh, two for two bosses, two key items. Uh, you love the bonus round. Mm -hmm. So Demis will not immediately give us the key item, but if we head back to Miss Village later, there'll be a key item there waiting for us. So something nice find. Ooh. McBain doing a little more shopping and finding... Is the tiara look on his interest there? Yes, it is. Uh, so great helmet there for Rydia. Let her hit just that much harder with her Leviathans. Or some extra safety for Rosa. It's it's a good helmet. Yeah, the little bit of bonus stats I think right now, as nice as it would be, it's you kind of need Rosa to make sure the party stays up. So you're just like, let's focus on that first, and then maybe in a little bit swap it around. Yeah, being alive is a really good source of DPS, so I can see that decision. McGain be uncomfortable here, not hanging out for a save after shopping. We'll just go ahead and take on the bosses here in Dwarf Castle, with Rex Banner making it cleanly through the demons. Yeah, these fights are nothing to be scared about at these power levels. Uh, again, both runners having done either the Evelyn, Ki Evelyn Castle or, again, Leviathan here. Uh, that's one thing that doesn't like being washed away, although it is not going to like being shocked later on. As well as since we've already found our wyvern, which is kind of usually the rudest thing that can just surprise you when you go check a uh, boss spot, I imagine our runners have been a lot more confident about just going into locations. One of my least favorite bosses to find, like before or at a low HP spot when it's really quick, is probably going to have to be uh, probably Ogopogo because he just sort of waves you there goes half your health and then oh here's half health for the next fight or if you come into a fight yeah. like the back-to-back -back fights and it's like okay you know that took a little bit out of me i should be fine and then just double wave immediately and just look, into that can i help you with something yeah as well or also just easy boss fights you're like oh i'm just gonna do the super cannon room it'll be fine what do i have to worry about here and yeah you run into the waves and still get wiped out yeah it can be it can be rude for sure Did Rydia learn Leviathan again from growing up? I think she did. All right, this is the Leviathan seed. Leviathan's everywhere. And Leviathan's for everyone. Yeah, she did. Thanks, Bad Gummy. Oof. Just an apple. I mean... Uh, you got a couple of people who will like that apple. You have the option of Rydia gaining a little bit of extra HP, uh, or if you were to level up this Eddie, he would enjoy that because he has very, very bad um, HP growth. Uh, question in chat. If you learn Leviathan twice, can you then summon Ogopogo? I mean, it is the higher tier nope rope, so possibly? I've never tried using a second Leviathan orb. Maybe that's what happens. 
Unfortunately, neither of our runners did so, so we didn't get to see that. But... I'd also take dual casting Leviathan. That'd be pretty good, too. Uh, Rex Banner also interested here in picking up the tiara. And Rex Banner is uh, interested in picking up the tiara. He's also uh, dealing with one of the worst bosses in the game, <laughs> NPC blocks. They are, and are we going to have, oh, nope. Okay, McVeigh oh, didn't get uh, the, the recharge of it, yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's there's a handful of uh, NPCs who just seem to always get in your way. And, uh, you know, without, as Chad actually noted earlier on, we don't have an easy source of exit on this team, which sometimes when you get trapped, that's just your fastest way out, and we can't do that here, as well as it is going to make a handful of locations in this game uh, much, much longer to deal with without having the way cast exit. Yeah, the, the lack of exit casters in this team is uh, a little high until you find, you know, it's somewhere later. Um, <laughs> But yeah, you're you're really hoping to find an Earth Crystal make that happen, and uh, unfortunately, as of right now, you're kind of more looking for uh, where are my bosses? Oh, and there's an Hourglass too. You buy you buy those right now. Definitely, it's always good to probably buy a, a handful of them. There's uh, quite a few bosses as it helps with. Uh, maybe if you take on say you want to do a gold dragon fight on the moon there's there's a lot of uses for having hourglasses having like four as mcbane bought right there it's really useful they just lock down anything that doesn't have that boss bit on it puts the stop status on them for such a long time the fight is effectively won yeah that's why i thought that you just absolutely handle um you can handle those dolls with no problem there's a spoon Ooh, that's um, an yeah. interesting time you're gonna level up some eddie now you know, maybe you do. We we haven't found hugely powerful gear for other characters, uh, and that spoon has the highest attack power in the game, so you get a few levels on him. He's going to hit really hard, but as you noted, he doesn't have a lot of HP. He's going to get knocked down really easy. Uh, I'm not sure you can make that work. It's kind of actually nice if you uh, have that Cecil start, and so you have your Paladin who can provide him cover. Uh, and you happen to not find the Holy Sword, you fall back to your, your Spoon Strats instead, but without that, yeah, it's a good source of damage, but he'd be hard to keep alive. So, glad to see how our runners feel about that. As he well as... It's harder to keep alive, but you can you can make ways, find ways to make it yeah. happen and, you know, go about like that. It, it's not going to be that big of an issue, although we do see uh, one mm. possible issue, especially <laughs> if that DKC is holding something very fun, that is that is a spicy DKC location, my friend. Yeah, that one, not where you want to see him. Uh, checking the notes here. 1300 damage from the uh, from the dark wave. So yeah, those are painful. Normally, DKC, not too bad of a fight. You can just go ahead and survive three attacks and you win. Uh, but if they do that much, it's a problem. Although, if you held on to Eddie, there's a way to get past it. And on the right side there, we have CPU, which is one of our boss targets, but that spot has a lot of HP, so it's it's going to take a long time. Even though you probably can get through it, you have a white mage, which makes it pretty safe to take on. It's going to take a long time, so do you want to do that now, or do that after you've got some more power on this team? And it looks Not like McVeigh's... Iridia, though. That's interesting. Taking on the DKC, <laughs> we're about to oh, see okay. how painful this is going to be. Again, okay, I noted 1300 is the max damage here, so Sid for sure good roll. Yeah, hit. Sid's fine. This is fine. Edge could have died, but he happens yeah. to have. And yeah, so now. Ooh, oh, how close. fast is Sid is the thing? Will he get a turn here? No. Nope. Rough. Uh, really He's nicely played low. there by McBane, though, kind of knowing just the damage levels that he could hit there and just how much HP he had on these characters going. Yeah might be able to take this on. And unfortunately, it was just the, the agility levels weren't there for him. But you can't yeah, this is having like look later, though. Yep, yeah, true. Come, yeah, you're going to have to come back for that CPU anyway. So you can come back maybe with more HP under your belt. Maybe we can find a curse ring somewhere so you can just fix your agility situation and get the characters you need to to be fast. 
Uh, it's definitely good knowing that it's there, so you can plan around it for your trip back. And Rex Banner has already dipped into the Silk Cave, which we see McBain doing here on the left side. And so by doing this, we'll be able to visit back in Kabul and get a key item here checked from Sheila and see what we can find, maybe open up some new locations. And I'm a big fan of the pan here. Uh, Earth Crystal, though, uh, was talked about that earlier being something yeah. you want to find. Yep. Yeah. Uh, also, two bosses. Uh, one not actually gated. You can do the first boss there, but when you can fully clear it, eh, pretty tempting to go there and get through the two bosses, as well as it's nice to get that exit spell because it like makes, say, going up to the moon a far less <laughs> scary idea as being able to get out of the lunar subterranean quickly is uh, very useful. So I would not be surprised to see that be followed up on. And McBain here giving us the Mist Dragon item. I had actually forgot the runners had defeated Miss, even though it was uh, very quick or very soon. And that's the mm. other half of Forge. That's spicy. That is. I. So McVeigh not knowing that there's an Earth Crystal with us, a treasury, as we see our expander going here, does he immediately go for that Super Smith? I would be very Looks tempted, like but we are having a treasure Ooh. going on right now. Uh, this for this this, that, this is an absolute like eight out of ten. That was an amazing treasury for this team. We got a defense sword there, so Kane can have some great equipment. We have two Stardust rods. That's more than we need, but excellent gear there for for dear. I believe I saw a Ninja Sword and a Full Moon, so Edge good weapon for him, and even Back Road weapons for him. Uh, that was just an amazing set of gear. Oh yeah, great. Yeah, easy 8, 9 out of 10 with what the party is and what we're looking for. Yeah. Uh, McBain also having done the uh, Elven Castle, having those white shirts, already has good defensive gear. So just getting all the uh, now offensive gear will just actually be like a quit for the end of the game. Really probably won't feel like he has to do any more looting at that point. No, I'd be very curious to see if he looted any more chests, but this is... I, the only thing I'd do, I would do Forge just for the curiosity sake, because again, if you can find maybe yourself a better weapon, if possible, for uh, this edge, maybe you find yourself some nice, uh, a nice bow for the Rosa, or maybe we get the Fire Hammer we, where we can let people hit things. This is a good team for doing it. There's multiple of the items you do have the right set of people who can put on this stuff that is really powerful. And we're probably heading back underground at some point anyway. That CPU is hanging out down there, so we're going to want to be back. If we're in the neighborhood and you have all the items, yeah, seems like it might be tempting to do. As well as all this good gear, the stuff you don't put on, you could sell. Maybe you can even buy some good stuff at that shop. So, yeah, definitely could be appealing to go in and go ahead and get that forge done. The web see if uh, Rex Banner does pick up his Legend Sword because he did not grab it. Uh, maybe this uh, Tower of Zot's going to dump him right back out by Baron, so he'll be in the neighborhood just waiting for that, trying to really uh, optimize there his flying around time. And I think getting the uh, great news here of, well, after dealing with the other hardest boss in the game, uh, the inventory boss, we'll get the great news of just how much power there is in this treasury. Yeah, I actually missed the ninja sword the first time through. The out of the cabin too, actually. Those those are probably. <laughs> I'm not gonna joke. Those might be like some of my favorite uh, items in that treasury. That uh, ninja sword, defense sword, and the cabin probably top three items. Yeah, definitely just an amazing set of uh, items in there. So I'm sure both owners are extremely happy stopped in there. And is this a vanilla mega sisters here? <laughs> this is, and I'm absolutely here for this this is what you love to see <laughs> this is a split hp boss in a spot where Rydia just kind of goes and go away and you can see there with uh the better gear the extra levels we have on Rydia, we're just doing a ton of damage now with leviathan yeah the few levels from that egg and just the other uh, abilities we've gone through or the other checks we've gone through to give her the xp uh, yeah, we have a definite car wash, especially with uh, low magic defense spots like this. This is tearing through the overworld. 
uh, AOE style as opposed to Edge just bonking things. As we noted earlier, just some piggies waiting for us up here in the character spots, although I do very much appreciate the uh, just the detail that's put into this. Not only is it just, okay, you don't get the characters, but I love the little piggies here when they just kind of run away. Right there. That's my favorite. Uh, just huge thanks to everyone who works on this uh, on Free Enterprise. Just excellent attention to detail all over the place. It's just a joy to play. Uh, it's, uh, that's a good Zot you want to see here. That's nice and requi uh, semi-required for the Golbez. We could have left this alone, but uh, no, here it is. Definitely good to find the boss here. Although, uh, so this is the Val spot. Val has pretty high magic power, so uh, if you do not get those star fails up, then this could be painful, but we see Rex Banner making very good use here of the status hierarchy, where if you've poisoned yourself, you actually can't get hit by the hold gas. So very well done here by Rex Banner. Yeah, it's very interesting oh. the fact that this game was coded with a bit of a, <laughs> an, of a hierarchy of the debuffs that you can get in your characters. Um, you're counting this. BK, uh, I guess you can call this a level of French vanilla because technically you have Golbez shooting <laughs> oh, you true. down the line and now you're fighting him here. This is like his sprite this is like shows a low fat soy bean team. vanilla latte with a shot of caramel. Yeah, okay, I'll take Definitely can be a mean place to find uh, Golbez here, but Rex Banner handling it excellently get through this fight. Uh, and yeah, de definitely interesting, the status hierarchy almost certainly wasn't done intentionally, but just a way to save memory. But hey, it's the way the game works out, and it's very interesting it does. Some... Yeah, it's fun when you get to see the uh, the interactions <laughs> back and forth, and uh, speaking of interactions, spell cast back and forth for Goldos. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can definitely see that uh, without the Star Veil up, those spells would be one-shotting the party at these levels. So being able to get a Star Veil up and safely get through this, well done there on Rex Banner's side. And we'll see if Nick Bane's able to deal with it similarly, or if it does catch him off guard. Because definitely, this is a root spot to find gold is. Um, Mike Mike also did note that Rex Banner came in here at battle speed 3. So we'll also help you get those commands in fast enough. Yeah, it's really heads up on some of these runners where they decide back and forth that they want to just swap back their battle speeds and just like, okay, we can do it here, we can do it there. And just watching them do it in times you go, man, this seems weird. And then it paying off. And you <laughs> it go, was perfect. Are you witches? Like, really? That is, having just played so many seeds, hundreds of seeds, and just going, if I run into this bo boss here, I'm dead, so I'm going to lower my battle speed. And that's our darkness first that is and unfortunately we didn't really get the poison off so we are in a, <laughs> a bit of danger but this could be uh, a little bit of an issue if we have oh no we are good uh right. that's a good hit still a little bit of danger but definitely helps having the extra character up I think the ribbon kind of protected from that too, so yes. we were very much safe from that. So having the three characters up, uh, poor Rosa. Yeah, that's what happens when uh, those spells get to go through. By the way, yeah, they hurt. Uh, let's see, sixty-three like magic power at this spot, so sixteen spell multiplier. Yeah, they're they're gonna hurt. Even even fire two would be somewhat painful at this spot. I mean, it's even funnier against uh, Golbez himself because he himself is weak to fire. So <laughs> watching him just kind of burn himself for a whole bunch of damage, you can go, sorry, what? That was a Or as he says, well, why? <laughs> why? Why did Fire 2 do 2,000 damage? Not what you expect. Right. Well done there by McBain, being able to also get through this buff. And we'll get his reward here of another boss lit up. So two out of seven done for both runners here and access to darkness crystal and thus the moon if he wants to go there. Yeah, we don't have access to a very limited amount of bosses. We're missing uh, two in the package and the harp. We're missing three in the baron key. And then we're missing one in both the tower and Luka key. So we have 
honestly a good chance that the boss that we're looking for is still or the bosses that we're looking for are still fully hidden right now but with the with the chances are they could be out in the open and one of my favorite places to go check for a pair of bosses is in, in fact that giant sure as two bosses up in that location no key items up there so it's the only thing dropping up there so it can be a really nice kind of check if you think your opponent might not do it and if you find one of your bosses up there you can feel like you're significantly ahead also if the bosses are not too rude so you can get through them fast well it's a lot of experience as well exactly and that's a nice little like double back and forth of like what is fun and what's not it's like you get the, the xp do you need it if you're still looking for like again you're looking for your bosses for a grind it's nice to have it's there is no bad choice it's all really good all right and chat noting rex banner picked up 10 drain spears which uh and then immediately heading to the underground where we know we have two things waiting for us here dkc and that CPU, and CPU without the uh, back row glitch on, can be kind of annoying to kill. But if you have a lot of darts, and Drain Spears are pretty good darts, it starts looking like a little more of a approachable of a fight. Yeah, you have darts, you, got, you have the edge going to be jumping. You're really good, to be completely honest, with the, the ability of the damage you've got. And yeah, it's... Oh, are we going to have McBain Forge? <gasps> what are we going to get? something exciting it's gonna be for cecil because it's always for cecil because <laughs> he's never in the seeds and we're always gonna get the crystal sword no, i want i want to see something good i want to see something good that this party can use i mean absolutely but you also know that it's going to be nothing but shenanigans because bk our able fantastic lance. restreamer has given us this fiery hammer i'll take fiery hammer i want the able lance let's see what we get i would be a fan of the able lance too uh nirvana stuff but... oh, yeah, okay so Good white mage stick. Also, I want to give a big a bit of a shout out to Bad Karma, who has rolled this uh, <laughs> mix of hot garbage and fantastic seed that we've got here. Uh, we have some great memes. We've got some fantastic work there. And also to our lovely Rybon, who is being pushing the buttons and making sure that they are keeping us safe here up in the booth so that Klopper and I can continue to do uh, what we want. Um, but this is uh, the Edge Forge, if I ever saw yeah. one. That's Mirasame's. That's a, a power shirt. And Protect Rings? Oh boy. Definitely. So even with the, uh, the Forge itself not being uh, maybe the most desirable item, it's still a lot of power done from doing that for so McBain probably feeling that was a worthwhile stop. And some extra power before heading off to the moon, a much, much more difficult portion of the game. Yeah, this is where you're gonna need to just like again throw all these darts, get these jumps, and McBain is yeah, gonna be doing the moon. I I'm, I'm here for this. This is a cheeky like, kind of a cheeky gamble now with the levels you've got. And especially with there could be some fun stuff here on the overworld that you've got to do. Yeah, uh, the good thing with coming up to the moon is there's a lot of bosses up here. And when your main objective is your boss hunt, uh, coming up here and looking for all of them could pay off really well. Let's see where we see Rex Banner here. Speaking of boss hunts, is clearing up his CPU, so well done to get through that. Uh, and do so relatively fast. If you generally consider it a safe fight, it only does percent based damage. So if you have a white mage, you can almost certainly get through it. But a lot of HP means it can take a long time. But Rex Manor taking good advantage of both the jump and dart commands, which get past those back row to get through the fight in a good time, even at fairly low levels still. Yeah, and yeah, he, he's looking at that DKC and says, you know what, uh, I agree, we'll come back later. Um, I I agree, oh, oh speaking of neat items, uh, okay. those are some Bacchus wines, we got some tents, 24 tents, <laughs> when you know you're not going to find cabins, so you say, I will sleep all my MP back to full, thank you very much. <laughs> you don't want to run out of tents, so let's just get them all right now. Uh, Rex Banner, wall still underground here can go ahead and take on that tower get one more uh key item check done while he's in the neighborhood you know what it is it, he bought one tent for every hour of the day so every hour you set up a tent you have a nap and then you can do it again next hour 
So you get fantastic levels of naps in fresh tents. Yeah, I mean, a tent after one hour of use, you really don't want to be sleeping in that anymore. You might as well move on to your next tent. So this good tent thinking bothers there. me. I require <laughs> another. Uh, you just leave them all still done up, though. So you just have 24 tents in a row. Just oh, lined up in. Oh, boy. You uh, you are not going to be happy with that there uh, for the most part. Um, so let me tell you about the place that's about as fun as that DK. <laughs> Why don't I? Uh, this is the place that fights for the highest attack power in the game. The other part is where that Dark Knight Cecil is. You thought 1300 waves were fun? Uh, you're about to watch some real pain happen. Yeah, these punches are going to hurt, unfortunately. Yeah, Like that! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gonna hurt. Uh, huh. We do have access to Blink, so Blink is a very powerful utility spell, which will let you go ahead and dodge two attacks to come in. But yeah, there is, at that spot, uh, 37,000 HP to shoot through, so there's a lot to get through there, and those punches are hurting. So, yeah, uh, this is going to be a challenge, I think. Yeah, the only time I would be taking this in a more aggressive... And McBain says, no, I want another round of this. I'm I'm here for this. This is <laughs> this is a fight we're like, no, we're not done. Oh, we're going for like mine first. I like this. This is really smart. Yeah, went ahead goes, well, let's, we have some good gear. Let's see how this fight feels. Oh, really bad. It still feels really bad. Let's go ahead and get a few more levels, and then we'll come back and do this. Uh, and these gold dragons are an excellent source of experience. Uh, kind of noted the hourglasses can be very good at this spot. Uh, they are a somewhat mean enemy, so being able to lock them down with those hourglasses, get them down, and especially if you can kill up a life glitch, or maybe even two, uh, gets you a good amount of experience pretty fast. Yeah, uh, the only problem is, is, oh my lord, that is an offensive item from Rex yes. Banner's side. Uh, but you know what? You at least now know that the dolls have uh, quite literally nothing. Um, just a light sword, which we got from the tri the Troya Treasury, by the way. Uh, but yeah, the the only we have no use for her. So. Absolutely not. The only quote issue that is with the doing these this gold dragon farm or the grind is the fact that we have. No real dragon killing weapons aside from if we kept Rydia with the dragon whip. Uh, we don't really have like the dragoon spear. As we see, uh, Edge is doing some great damage because of the money that we spent in the forge. But that's kind of it. Kane, again, berserk, not really fun. But uh, yeah. Yeah, true. Without being able to get through them really fast, they do have a good chunk of HP each. So uh, having to do those, yeah, is going to be somewhat slow, but. Hey, if you feel like you need the levels to take on these bosses, they are a good source of experience. Indeed, and while we have Rex Banner doing some checks and McBain is going to go and say hello to the Odin, um, there is uh, a question in chat. The difference between the blue and the red moon, uh, the boss pools and the starting characters are fairly different. Additionally, T-Pro versus T-Wildish, and we also have a couple of different glitches that are on. The warp glitch and the back row glitch and the blue moon are not here in the red moon. So that's why we talk about some things like that. Um, as well as, like I said, you will see more free bosses in the blue moon versus what you would in the red moon. You see here we have nothing but tough, tough boss fights. Yep. Rex Banner here does remember to come by and turn in his D-Mist here to get his Legend Sword and see if he is also interested now in doing that forge for heading, before heading off to the moon. And it looks like he is. And McBain just saying, no, everyone gets to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of work here. <laughs> we even have Sid, our anchor, picking violence with these uh, Bacchus wines. Throwing the spoon, by the way, I don't know if he caught that, because that was a 9700 dart from that edge. This seems like a good boss uh, get that spoon out on. It's going to be a rough one to get through, so use everything you can to get it done and not have to come back into uh, cave value. Seems like a good option. Uh, I also like the uses here of slow on Odin. Uh, make it slower, less attacks, longer time before the Odin spell comes out. All that's going to be helpful. Yeah, and Rex Banner getting the good news of, hey, how do you like Power Shirts, Mirasame's Protect? Honestly, this entire shop is just wonderful. 
I don't think there's a single bad thing in that shop. Yeah. Like, Which, you, you kind of want everything that's there. You want the the White Spear for Kane when his accuracy gets higher. You want the Mirasamis for Edge so you can do some more damage. Power Shirts is just always good for everybody who can bonk things. Uh, yeah, it, it, that's just a shop. Yeah, just so much power in there, so you're happy to take advantage of it. Which looks like Rex Man picked up. Was it two Power Shirts or just the one? I believe I saw two, but I can be incorrect. Uh, I think we'll see later during equipment. Exactly, but for right now, we do see McBain uh, in the scary part of this fight now, because the magic stat maybe, uh, you know what, I say that, and then we have <laughs> the wish-wish stab from uh, Edge, and that is a Odin that's down. That's where he takes the lead in bosses, and honestly, very, very well done fight. Yeah. Reward is something you could have bought for free. Uh, I Is he going to keep? Oh, we have to keep because of the boss. Oh, yeah. You, yeah. I kind of forgot about that. Yeah. We did this because we had to take on Odin, so whatever reward we got is just bonus on top, and it still is something. Uh, we did finish Zot, didn't we? We have Exit. Uh, could be forgetting it, or could just be or on autopilot. Maybe, Again, or every MP. once in a while, you just don't get used to Exit, so you just kind of go, well, this is happening. <laughs> we have Warp. We'll Warp out of here. So uh, that is a location you can use exit the spell or the item to get immediately all the way out of uh but you can as you just saw there on the main side you can also go ahead and use warp to come up one floor at a time you know they're still fairly quickly faster than walking out uh there are a handful of dungeons where exit is turned off so you can't use uh, that to get out quickly So at this point, we do have a little bit of divergence here of our uh, runners both having three out of seven bosses done, but different bosses. We have Rex Banner having taken on CPU, who was in the Fey March at the Asura spot, and McBain having just finished there, the Odin in the Cave Valley. That's the Bahamut spot. Yeah, this is where we get a, like I said, an interesting, um, an interesting choice. It's are we going to do... Uh, of both of the, yeah, of the the moon. We're gonna go check the check the giant. I think the giant's gonna be more of a play after the moon has been fully cleared, because it's gonna depend on what key items we find here and where they are. Because we could have a ridiculous chain that holds most of these key items still. Yeah, very possible. As well as just how many bosses you stumble in up here. If you only have one boss left, well, maybe go ahead and check the giant before you check anywhere else out, just to try to finish off your boss. In. Especially with Rex Banner, they're already knowing he has the pass in hand. Speaking of Rex Banner, also getting the good news that we have a <laughs> uh, that we have a shop that all of our fighters like. Yes, please, let's make some good time and picking up some boxes. Not having enough for anything more than a few, but uh, that few is going to be a good time for those people. Uh, speaking of, on the left hand side, McBain finding the other half of one of our joke objectives from the beginning, beginning <laughs> as well as the North American note rope, we have the Leviathan. Not quite as scary as the Pogo Pogo Lunar side, but still in a high magic spot. Very, very annoying. Definitely. Not the scariest boss to run into here, so it looks like we're going to do this relatively fast. Pale Dim has eh, just kind of middling magic stats, so even ace 2s were not the best to them. Yeah, the only magic that Paladin really does is the slow, the everyone's favorite noise. But we're not going to hear that here. <laughs> uh, all we're going to see is just Leviathan. Uh, question right. from the chat. Isn't the Canadian note rope also the North American note rope? Uh, no, North America and Canada can technically be two different things. Canada is part of North America, but North America is a different version. And we have no. Rex Banner here getting the news of the Odin in this fairly rude spot. So we'll see if he feels like he's already been taken on. And just full moon there on McBain's side. Yeah, I mean, you're kind of unhappy with getting stuff like that, but you're mostly, I think, now here for the experience which at this point is gonna be the big thing because you could grind with those sirens or you could take these bosses go for your key items because as we've said we are missing 
five gating key items, or five boss gating key items right now. So it's, you kind of look at this place and go, fine, I guess we'll do this. <laughs> yeah, you've already done all the hard work of killing the boss. So uh, yeah, go ahead and see the full moon. Go, well, let's keep the experience and just, especially with having access to exit, we can just exit on out. So our expander here into the Odin portion of the Odin fight. Nice timing there on the jump to uh, get Kane to avoid it. Uh, although magic power is not terribly high here, so we're only seeing just under a thousand damage from it. But the punch is very much hurting and cleaning up his party. I'm not say, sure how much damage the, uh... he has. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm not sure how much damage he's done here. If he's uh, trying to still get the kill here or just time these jumps and lead into a Thunderstruck. Now this is a Thunderstruck because he's got that illusion and he's just waiting for the axe to raise. Might even be queuing up the Thor Rage right now, which is probably the good. Second. Yep, perfect timing. Uh, we are going to get this Kane Destruct. This is what I really like to see. I love yes. to see, like, Eddie strats, fantastic. Don't get me wrong. Watching Eddie do this is, is masterful. However, my boy Kane showing that he is also tied for best boy, which is why the two of them are the best <laughs> boys, says, Odin damage? What Odin damage? And just jumps over it and says, and away with you. Yes, expertly done there by Rex Banner, timing all those jumps there over the Odins, uh, having that illusion up, so being able to avoid the very powerful swings, and then just timing in that Thor Rage, which is a little bit interesting timing, because you have to do it a bit before you saw the sword go up and get that thunder struck in, so very well done. We see here a little swap now of McBain heading back down into Fey March, going to be taking on the CPU. Again, our objective does have more levels than Rex Banner when Rex Banner was down here, so might feel confident also on taking on that DKC, which could get us a unknown key item, one that might be useful. With the HP that is available on this uh, SID, plus we have some Cure Threes, I foresee a Cure Three going out and happening up. Um, but yeah, I, I don't see much of a problem back and forth with uh, with McBain taking out any of these fights, and either one of them, really. About another 1,000 HP on Sid would make it easier, question quotations, but this is still a fight that you just look at and go, nah, this is completely fine. Yeah. Uh, also, McBain doing, as we like to call, Plan Q, where you just kind of hold down the damage and, do, and try and beat out these uh, Globe 199s. Uh, it's a lot of HP here. You're still going to come out, but the, between the fights that you had and the Leviathan, it's a chunk of the HP gone, but not all of it. We are doing really good damage. Like, that edge is very, very well equipped. So hitting for almost 4k on each swing and zerked up, so just getting out of those attacks really fast does let that plan work out just perfectly. And uh, very fast done there by McBain to get through that thing. Yeah, again, he's rewarded with his pass. The real question is, are you going to go and take this DKC fight? It, it's so tempting, and it's so hard to say if it's right or wrong, but you're really looking for uh, a good heal from, especially with the Cure 4. You're more inclined, I think, to to take it, because you can just, like, Cure 4 with... Um, you can throw, like, a Cure 3, Cure 4 with Rosa, and utilize that. So it, it's going to be interesting. There you go. I really like that cure onto Edge, since Edge was going to get the next turn, so you can then just sit comfortably on him and have him toss out a cure three uh, as one attack was going to knock him out. And we'll see here the third attack from DKC, totally survival by Edge, and the fight is done. Very well played there by McBain. Yes, very, very well done. This is, again, heads up play, knowing that you can cure this way, cure different ways to keep yourself up and just like sit on characters' turns. So it's like, okay, this is how the turn order is going to be. Her manipulation, especially in fights like this, really, really beneficial. Yeah, as well as <laughs> just a black strip. Uh, uh, that's painful. Uh, oh, so. that's what you love. You love to see it as a commentator. <laughs> you hate to see it as a runner. This is this is what you just let go and go. No, like no. I, I a hundred percent expect in when we go to do the interview one of these runners to say something that we may have to uh, go silent on stream <laughs> for uh, while we let them get their start off. And then we go, okay, sorry, now that we're done, uh, can we continue with the interview? Yes, please. Uh-huh. 
Uh, yeah, that that's unfortunately got to feel kind of bad. I'm uh, sure that was McBain. Uh, purposely did that in the routing there. Okay, let's go do a little bit there on the moon so we can get those levels. And then when we go take on our CPU, we can also do that DKC and really hope we get one of our, you know, key items that lead to more boss locations, that Baron Key being a nice big one. And unfortunately, just really not paying out for it. Ooh, Rex finding a lovely required objective here in a spot that has a lot of key items. This is Leviathan here at the uh, B Lunar spot. This is some HP to go through again. Yeah, a lot to get through here. Uh, also, three bodies all being able to throw attacks, and they punch, as you just saw there, hard enough that it's it's pretty scary, so... Uh, not as high attack power as we saw at the Bahamut location, but still high enough. Uh, definitely having access to something like Leviathan to be able to take out the arms in one go is going to help a lot here, but uh, a scary uh, battle to take on, for sure. Although, as chat's noting, maybe this is our grind here. We just do an arm grind. One of the classic pre-enterprise grinds. Please don't do that. It'll take a very long time. I mean, if you need your experience, you can just click and Leviathan and not really just... worry about anything. It's fine. It's fine. This is what you want, right? So luckily, the arms don't only attack. They do throw in things like the vampires and the tangos, which are not as powerful as getting those stacks, but uh, seeing that's actually getting the blinks up are going to really help Rex Banner get through this fight. And Fame looks like he'll be finding this fight as well uh, after finishing off the Fame March there. Don't believe he ever did check Tower, uh, so was willing to just come back to the moon here and take on Looks like valuing unknown boss locations over unknown key items. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at a spot where it's like, okay, there's one key item there, I'm still looking for the other half. If I come back down to the Earth, then, like, once I'm done with the moon, then I can go clean up everything down there. As, as nice as it would be to go and take care of that fight there, I think once you took care of the black, the black shirt and said, no, we're done, you're kind of looking for anything else at this point although i am here for the fact that we're getting side-by-side -side room checks so we're getting new ground from both runners here this is dark elf not a required boss and is mcbain just gonna start doing face check mode i like it from this save room you're so close that you can check all the bosses see which ones you get see which key items you get and then decide without really much of a time loss to go back and take that fight if you need to later that is 50% of a good item. That is uh, the Luca key. You're a fit. Also, McBain resetting out, I think. Oh, wants to put Kane up at the front now. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a that's a good call. I respect that. And yeah, looking at this going, yep, let's go. But yeah. Although, importantly, that is two key items, even though the pink tail is not uh, going to give us another boss check. But Rex Banner getting here very close to his 10 key items, which will mean getting the rest of the levels he might want, finishing off the seed, could be a lot faster for him, as he has done no dedicated grind at this point. Yeah, and I mean, technically he could have started doing a grind. The <laughs> arms were there. The arms were right there. He could have just done that, gotten his experience, and. I'm yeah. sure he was thinking about the 10 key item threshold, and it's like, ah, just. I don't have enough key items here to grind arms for hours on end, so I'll, I'll come back and do this later. True, true. One day we'll see that happen. Uh, but yeah, that Dark Elf, I I hope... Ooh, this is an Elements fight. This is... Oh, this is interesting that they'll take Elements versus taking the... Uh, the Ribbon Room. Or not the Ribbon Room, the White Spear Altar. That's I guess, interesting. I think it was just the if you could find more of the required bosses in those two locations, then you might feel okay totally fading it, having them both miss. He's like, all right, there's enough of this seed left. We have to look at these key items. Let's not reset as well as this was a further walk than the White Spear room. So let's go ahead and stick out this fight. Because uh, right now at this point, there is just on the only the one boss location we haven't done yet. Uh, 
and we have how many boss spots we could check right now with that Luka key? That's one more, and then we, as we noted, the giant is another two. Technically, only Luka three key. more, so we got really three boss spots left. Okay, yeah. You know, this might have been worth fading then, as we're looking at that. Uh, oh yeah, and crystal Sword, so We have four. Oh sure, yeah. Four available. Yeah, so this is this is a spot where I think with these like two bosses left four boss spots that you have access to and like five still hidden or four still hidden the numbers are in your favor to, to find them but in the same token you kind of don't want to do you kind of don't want to leave it off on the table i think especially with pass in hand you finish the moon you leave you never look back just never, you don't have to worry back. about it yeah i like that so I 100% see Rex Banner if nothing is here, resetting out and go, yeah, resetting out, going, taking that, um, oh, wow, he's going to take the experience. Uh, but going and taking that other fight, like, you just have to clear Dark Elf because there is still a chain and we've had people in chat want to go and talk about it, one of which being the <laughs> evil of bad karma, talking about the painful path that we could have one key item locking everything else behind it. Yep, that is actually possible. Uh, it's a, <laughs> there is two unknown bosses. So Baron Key blocks three bosses. We saw one right at the start of the game, which was not required. I think it was Antlion. It was, it was, it anyway, was not, yep. not required boss, uh, which means there's two unknown bosses there. If both of those bosses are part of our pool, even though we might find one of our other bosses somewhere else, Baron Key could very well be required. It requires two unknown bosses being there. But yeah, it could be that, and it could be Baron Key at the end of a long chain. In which case, fading any of these key item checks could really set you back in getting to the end of the seed. Yeah, and, and it really depends on... I think whatever this Dark Elf holds, if this Dark Elf holds yet another key item, it's going to be very curious to see what the path is going to be. But if it holds nothing, then... Ooh, that Luka Key's got some heavy lifting to do. Mm -hmm. uh, McBain seems to make the same choice here. Let's go ahead and take on this elements here, and let's get these key items and find out where everything else in this seat is hiding out. The other nice thing is, is again, we do have the Crystal Sword as well, so that's another spot um, mm -hmm. that could be hiding something cheeky. Uh, also, Rex Banner making very good use of the the fact that the boss bit is removed for this phase of Dark Elf. Yeah, Dark Elf having two forms, the Dark Elf for the first half, and then this Dragon form in the second half, which does not have the boss bit on, so feel free to throw the stop spell and Hourglass on it, the weak spell, and get through that portion of the fight uh, that much faster. So, well done there on Rex Banner. McBain deciding not to stick out that Elements fight, and will just be giving us the first glimpse here of that Crystal Sword altar. That is something that you would definitely be punished for fading. Very well could be. That's a Twin Harp, which does hide a, another key item check, as well as a boss, an unknown boss, so very well could be important. Uh, also does put Rex Banner now at 10. Counting tricky. Uh, no, that's 10 key items. We are finally at 10. All Rex right, is we at the it. part where he gets bonus XP. Uh, that is... Another nope rope here on the on the moon. Um, yeah, we have both ropes here uh, having gone above where they should be, and I'm okay with this. <laughs> and we saw there the opening there, big wave attack to do half HP on everyone, and then we're gonna get that all oh, that was some pretty powerful punches. We're we're getting bosses who do punch at these very high attack power locations, and we can see them knocking down many characters. I think this is like the third strongest physical attack spot in the game. I could be very wrong. Uh, I have been known to be wrong before, and I will continue to be wrong until morale improves. It is right out there with some of the highest attack uh, spots in the game. So, it, so it's, if not third, fourth or fifth for sure. A very powerful boss. And we can we can see exactly that happened there to make things team. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately though, Rosa. Top tier white mage, so being able to keep people alive through this fight anyway. 
yeah, her HP growth plus the items that we've found for her have just made her. Uh, unfortunately, that big wave is gonna say good night, Rosa. Um, we're gonna need to get some. Uh, never mind. Uh, Ogre Club is going down. <laughs> But sufficient damage here, we were able to get through that uh, spot fast enough and clean it up and find our last key item hanging out here on the moon is Baron the Key. Baron yeah, key. you definitely don't want to fade those spots. Big pickup. Now, is McBain done here on the moon or going to go ahead and check some of the spots or maybe make a save here and go ahead and check the spots he can and then keep that save to maybe reset back if he needs to? Or are we grinding? Ah, uh, there's Bane. a possibility of a grind here. Nope, we definitely are seeing an exit here. Cool. So, uh, uh, and yeah, so this is where it depends on. Okay, so Clopper, you're in this position. You have two key items that are really gating here for you. You've got the Baron key. You've got the Luca key. I mean, technically three and the Twin Harp. Where are you going first? Baron. In McBain's case, without having the Twin Harp, then it'd be Luca, and then it'd be uh, Giant, hopefully having already hit one boss, and then just hoping to pick the last one on the Giant, if I still haven't found them at this point. Rex Banner, I still I still like Baron first, just because there's two bosses there, as well as the location. You have a bit of a walk, but the bosses are very low HP, so you don't shoot through them that much faster. Rex Banner side, I would probably go ahead and still do Baron, followed by the Twin Harp, uh, simply because the Twin Harp is just a above ground you're kind of in the neighborhood although it is a bit of a longer check but you you want to get paid off for getting to an art for spending that time to get it so uh, since you got it don't fade it yeah baron definitely seems to be like the, the, chance the first of both bosses yeah you got two you got two bosses that are unknown two bosses you're looking for personally i'm a bigger fan of the giant just so you can get rid of that not to think about it especially if you're still looking for two different uh if you're still looking for two different ones and it, uh, again it's you're looking at what you said for your priority of what you want for bosses you didn't mention giant you didn't mention that that that's where i like to go i like to go for the places where people are like you know what let's go somewhere that no one really wants to think about and where no one is like oh i'm not inclined to go here i want to go here instead cheeky checks are what can win you races and i'm very much here for them I think that's a big thing too, how you're feeling about how your race has gone for you. It felt like you're behind, you know, you took some wipes at some bosses or other whatever reasons you might feel behind. Go ahead and do those cheeky checks. I think you're right that doing giant is more of a cheeky check. And the big reason behind that is because while there are two bosses there, to see the second boss, you have to go through the elements. And the elements has a lot of HP. So unless you happen to get a freebie boss there, it's going to take you a while to get through that to see who that second boss is which is likely why we're seeing McBain uh, prefer to go ahead and do Baron, where you get two bosses fairly fast, simply because uh, we can get through these bosses quickly. Uh, Sparkle giving us some D-Lifters. Rex Banner here taking advantage of having those key items and choosing to do an egg grind. Definitely when you can one-shot those eggs, this is a really fast way to get your experience. You get into the battle fast, you get out of it fast, you get your experience. Uh, you don't have to do any counting like with D-Machines. You can just see what level you're at after every Siren. Uh, get your experience here and get to the levels you need to take on the rest of the seed and go ahead and head on out. Yeah, um... The nice thing is, is, again, as you're mentioning it here, the eggs, especially with 10 key items, are your fastest grind. Uh, oh, hey, look, got a free. Um, <laughs> this is, re unless you're like one or two shotting the, um, the the gold dragons, you're not really getting more XP off of them versus time. If you're looking for item versus uh, EXP benefit, like you have a limited amount, then yes, you want to do the you want to do the dragons. But if you've got more than enough of what you need, you're just okay with that. Oh, and the trash, we threw out the pan. Uh, what was wrong with it that uh, we had to toss it out? You know, maybe it has like some a, a bend in it, but if we just go ahead and smack Yong with that, it'll just it'll just knock that right back out. It'll put back in good shape and we can give it to Sheila. It'll be good as new after that. Uh, so pan does provide us two more key items, which is potential to give us to the tower key, which is a uh, key item leading to another unknown boss as well as we also have the package 
is another key item that can lead us to an unknown boss. So, which it is possible that two of our bosses are behind those, so the very well might be important to find those two key items. Oh, I'm 100% here for those kind of checks. <laughs> like, I, I love when runners like, oh, I've got the package, I've got this, I shouldn't do it. Uh, but Baron is paying out. That yep. is one, one boss we need of our last three. Uh, yeah, this is a decent payoff. You're kind of hoping that Lukaki has the other if you're in McBain's spot, or maybe even one of the, um, maybe even one of the giant spots, but if that harp has the other, Rex Banner's in a better position. Definitely. As well as having his grind at this point, so once he does find this boss and a twin harp leads to his other, uh, he's, he's right next to where he needs to be, has all his levels, has all his crystal, uh, can be very fast in getting into that sea fight. Uh, yeah. But again, there's still locations left. The the remaining two bosses could be hiding in some hard to get locations. Package is a very annoying one to find a boss in, as it's both hard to get to because you have to find the package. It just takes a long time, so you're really not incentivized to do it. Yeah, it's one of those ones you look at and you go, oh, I really don't want to do it, but it is ones that you look at and like, if I don't do this and my opponent did and there's a boss sitting there. here for how many times, how long? Like, especially a really early package check, like you, I'm a fan of like sub 20 minutes, you check that package <laughs> immediately. And like, after about 40 minutes, uh, I'm looking at that package burning a hole in my pocket going, I might need to go back for this. Do I really need to? I think that's again, very much one of those Am I behind and need to do a low percent chance play? Let's go ahead and do the package at that point, especially at that 40 minutes. But we see just a guide drum here from the server. So it looks like for McBain, his uh, places follow up on are, well, the pan to get more key items. Luka key, which is nice because it lets him both check the boss and you actually see the key item first too, so he can know if the tower key or package is down there, as well as two boss locations on the giant. There's a lot of good options here for McBain. It'll be interesting to see which way he goes. Yeah, it's it's very interesting, and I, I definitely agree with this Luka key check first. It's underground; you can just really look, and if there's nothing there, you just reset out of it. Unless the only thing you keep is literally tower or package. Which, if either one of them are there, you have to do it. You can't ignore those at this point. Yep. Uh, and you are underground, so if it doesn't work out, you do have the option of going ahead and turning in that pan to try to find, say, the tower key or the package, or in McBain's case, he's hoping it might also be the twin harp, although we know it's not there. Uh, Rex Banner using all those levels to just demolish his way through the ant line. Uh, I imagine he'll have no problem with these first two fights, and we'll probably even get to the Asura fight just a little bit faster as he has that additional power now. Yeah, and really... The power for both runners, like you, you may say that uh, Rex Banner's done his grind, so he's in that power, uh, the power hierarchy, but <laughs> McBain still has more than enough to get through this. And no matter what boss is here, it's going to be short for the world. You're not going to get Rydia nuke levels of short, but you're still going to get, you know, Rydia, you know, and Leviathan levels of short, which is not much worse, a little bit slower, but still almost as powerful. And depending on what you find, like especially if you find the gauntlet here, just as good. Could you imagine the alt gauntlet here? I'm, I'm here for just sitting and listening to that music for a lot longer than we should. <laughs> I'd be excited for that. It'd be a fun... You have to walk that out. You cannot <sighs> leave that. Yeah, we were talking about all the items, but the chain item, so it might be important, so you do have to walk it out. Go uh, that's the probably the last thing the game went to see. But that's it. Boss that's it. Oh, Octomon. No. Oh, it, it hesitated just too long. Oh, it's so sad. I can tell what you thought. A lot of the time you see a long pause before the fight loads up. That can usually be a sign there of the gauntlet coming in, uh, just because it takes the extra time to load that up. But unfortunately, just the Octoman there. And so the game going ahead and choosing to not follow up on the uh, Rat Tail, so we'll reset out and go straight to the Giant, which is nice. There is two bosses up here, so and he does only need to find one more boss out of the two remaining. Humans. Yeah, and there is still some really, again, some other spots for it. That Rat Tail could hide the package, which could have it, or the, or the Tower Key that could have it. We could have, again, both of them here. We could have, again, 
one of them behind the twin harp, which would be some really fun to divergence. I, w I want to see all eight bosses. That's been <laughs> one of my favorite things about oh, these flag sets. You can find all eight. Ah, I agree. I really like the fact that you don't have to do every objective here. It's seven out of eight bosses, and so it can be really exciting to see two runners take alternate routes and get to the end in very similar times. It makes for very exciting races. So. Uh, Let, and we let's hope we see that. That's fun. I mean, I am 100% here for that. I am actually here also for the, the violence that Chad is proposing uh, <laughs> for Rat Tail leading into Magna Key for an extra womp if someone takes it. And but if we have we to have go back, it, uh, I'm good for this. <laughs> I can also see why McBain very much didn't value the Rat Tail too highly with the amount of uh, boss checks he could still do to get key items and the pan having two. Uh, it really probably did not feel like that uh, time sink was worth it to walk in. Conte, uh, you're not happy, but this is a low magic spot. You can kind of just berserk and go here. Mm -hmm. So uh, I heard okay. you guys wanted to look at some leg for a hot while. Hey, Yo. good thinking here by McBain and holding on to that blizzard spear for this long. Uh, the question is, BK, uh, Bad Karma, our lovely, um, our lovely restreamer, how far could you throw this leg? But yeah, look at that Blizzard Spear. That is 6,500 damage. Which is really good to see here, because the Element Spot does have 65,000. It has a lot of HP, so you really want to get those damage numbers high to get through this as fast as possible. So really good to have that Blizzard Spear in hand. Uh, yeah. As well as being able to do your damage in really high increments like this means you just have to watch less fire tubes come out, which less animations is also a good thing to get through the fight quickly. Uh, yeah, Edge uh, you can do it 4k, very impressive. Yeah, Edge is just pure power, Kane out of 7k plus low. <laughs> I am I, I wanna see a crit of quad nines. Kane, please give me what I need, my boy. One crit, come on. Uh, always impressive to see a Zerker dish out the quad nines. And, you know, there are times where people like to say, man, Kane doesn't really do a lot of damage. Like, well, this is the power of what happens when you have elemental weakness, my friends. Yep. Not usually the strongest of fighters, but he does have good access to both elemental weaknesses and, as we kind of saw earlier, against the plague, uh, being able to hit the flying enemies for extra damage. So Kane can sometimes be your high highest damage dealer in any given fight. And it's really interesting, again, we have like the multiple flying enemies, or like the um, the plague fight we saw earlier, where Kane just kind of looks at it and says, here, let me do all of this damage. Uh, and speaking of doing all of this damage, absolutely clinical fight with 65,000 HP of who cares what boss is here, uh, ripping through this Rubicante, who is just... Look at the experience. That's what you're also here for. I think for. that's a big thing is for McBain is because he didn't spend that time to do an egg grind. All that experience has now also put him into very comfortable Zeromus levels. He's already had all the offensive power, and now that extra levels means Rosa has really high levels of HP. So you'd be really safe going into that fight. Yep, and McBain doing a very, very heads up thing, utilizing the warp spell to go back a little bit. It just shows that it goes into so many different areas. And yeah, we are going to get... I am a hundred percent here for uh, for the possibility of what we're gonna fight next. I really, really hope that this is honestly. I hope this is all gauntlet and we fight Evil Wall somewhere Ooh. else. But Evil Wall here is just rude. Yeah, that definitely is. Uh, we're talking about high attack power spots. This is a high attack power spot. So Evil Wall. Oh, here it is. There it is. Not that I've ever seen this before <laughs> in my career. So this is. McBain's go mode. This is why you do the checks that people say, oh, well, I wouldn't go here. Uh, well, let me introduce you to grind upon grind. You, th you thought that the eggs were a good way to grind? How about a two for one of a grind as well as a boss check? Definitely really good. This puts McBain into a really good position here, especially given Rex Banner came into the Luka Cave, which makes a ton of sense, but we happen to know it's not gonna pay off which does mean if Rex Mariner chooses, say, do giant, given the fact it has two bosses next, he's definitely behind McBain here, and McBain caught up on the experience gap through getting the grind in the first fight, and hey, even some more experience through doing uh, this alt gauntlet. So, first of all, I want to do a big shout-out to our restreamer, Bad Karma, 
who has rolled this mwah, chef's kiss, my friend. Uh, I am going to divvy out you a special magic item later. We'll talk about it, and don't worry about it. Uh, rest of the group, if you're listening, you didn't hear that. And this is exactly the kind of stuff that I like. Give me the cheeky checks. Give us these kind of fun things. Uh, again, also, Rybon, keeping all these bosses in check. Also, checking and unchecking key items, such as the rat tail that we reset out of. Uh, additionally, big, big shout-outs to my co-commentator, Iclaw, here for keeping me honest, keeping uh, me in the know, and for keeping us uh, well-informed more than my little shenanigans of vanilla loving can do. Definitely big thanks to everyone involved, and you as well, Death. It's been joy so far doing this with you. Uh, do check chat. Everyone's been linked there. Give everyone a follow especially our runners who have been putting on a great show for us today. They are both excellent players in free enterprise, so very worthy of a follow. Yeah, and absolutely. And again, reminder, this is game one of their best mm -hmm. of, of Infinity, because there is going to be, as much as we're going to have them run, this is going to be a tie later on tonight. So we are going to have to have the, the admins go and watch this back so we can have them replay game one over and over again for as long as ZZ3 has been going on. So do see Rex Baron here is willing to pull up on that rat tail. So wanting to find that potentially last two key items, the package or the tower key, to see if it has value, uh, which hopefully it does for him, because otherwise it's putting him off even longer for where that last boss would be. Yeah, and this is where it gets really interesting. Is Rex going to go and chase down this rat tail immediately, or are we going to have one of the other key items in his hands going on? Yeah, this is. Ooh, I feel like this is very, very yeah. interesting because this puts this does put McBain in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. But Banner, if the boss is at uh, that we do have is at music and he can get through it quick enough, you could you could one hundred percent make this happen. You can yeah, make it a lot closer race than it looks. Yeah, the alt gauntlet is, as you can see, it's a long fight. McBain's still in here getting through no. this. That evil wall at the music is going to be a faster fight. Don't you dare say it, Clopper. And that's all I have to say on that matter. That's what I thought. Uh, no, I did not. Oh. Though to my to my tracker who is trying to <laughs> tease us on into saying the line, uh, as well as I know our lovely restream who'd probably push us towards it too if he would say anything. Uh, there is no contractually obligation to talk about the fact of whether or not we can or cannot be Schrodinger's underground access once we gain a specific item. We're not talking about it. All that has all, that's all we have to say on that. All right, so Rex Baron is going to go ahead and follow up on that twin harp. So yeah, if this is Evil Wall, that keeps this race really close and be very interesting. If it's not that, McBain very strong position here. All right, so let's put yourself into Rex Banner's shoes right now. You find no evil wall here. Where are you going afterwards? Like, you have uh, so many other areas. Where are you going to go? Yeah, that's a tough one. So you're looking at your pan or your giant, I think, are things you'd want to follow up on. Probably do the giant. It just is bosses immediately as opposed to pan which takes a fair amount of time to turn into the key items to give you those bosses so i think i'd follow yeah, up on actually the unless tower key is here pan has both the other two boss oh, locations so this actually kind of dictates where you would go after yeah. this i think if this is not exactly tower key or package with an un with a required boss oh sorry with an unrequired boss then i think you're gonna have to go and yeah, you're going to have to go and, and check that pan. Well done there by Rex Banner to get through this fight quickly. Just going to go ahead and throw that coffin onto his Rosa, killing off the last uh, non-paralyzed member of his team, ending the fight and bringing us into phase two of this fight, which has some very nice music for us. We talk over this, right? That's that's what I think they said to do in the guide, right? No, no, wait. Don't talk. Was, don't talk. Enjoy the music.
That is not the boss you want to find. Nope. And that key item is not what you want to <laughs> find either. Oh, Painful. no. Yeah, so that definitely. pan has your last two bosses. Yeah. Uh, in Rex Banner's ch choice, you can either follow up on that pan to find your last bosses or go to the giant. If you're looking for your bosses there, both the great options. Looks like he's going to head over to the giant. But McBain, having done that first, is has quite a lead here. Yeah, this is so honestly, this is so this is the that was the nail in the coffin. Unfortunately, it was a fantastic music from Earthbound, the new age retro hippie ba boss battle or fight music, not boss battle music. <laughs> uh, he, who he is a boss, though, that music is fantastic. This um, barring a really bad wipe on McBain's side, this is going oh, to be kind of game one in his hand but yeah. this is honestly oh it's it's a lot closer than it looks here this was a re this was just the one decision of which area to fade versus which area not to and both runners fantastic choices like this seed i i don't think i could have run any better and yeah we're about to go into a fight that mcbane is going to show us with some z flags in chat we randomize everything, we don't randomize Zeromus' location, but we do randomize what he's looking like, and Buffer, as the Crystal Throne, asks the question. Whose butt are we going to kick tonight? And does he have a cute hat? I only know something something butt, so I mean, you're already doing better than me. <laughs> yeah, that, that covers most of the same uh, issue, so something something butt. I'm really, I'm here for the hat. Show me a cool hat. Cute hats are always nice. Uh, I'm here for something... Mm, let's go something old-school Final Fantasy. Yeah, I'd like to see that. That is Diablos? I don't uh, know this one. Chat, help. We do have the wonderful art dev, Scholar Kitty, who's done most of these sprites. Uh, <laughs> I don't recognize where this one is specific. It is amazing, um, I know that. But I do not Tactics recognize where Ogre, it's apparently, uh, or uh, Ogre Battle. Ogre no, Battle. Ogre Battle, as said by the wonderful art dev. Thank you, Scholar Kitty, for both providing the information and creating this masterpiece here. You got your Ogre Battle into my Final Fantasy. <laughs> Uh, specifically from uh, Mia Smear, Rashid from Ogre Battle, March of the Black Queen. Uh, that is when you have some really good uh, game knowledge. That's fantastic. Again, shout out to some of the games that are uh, other fun, other fantastic RPGs on the SNES. You guys definitely need to check some of these out. Again, as uh, RPG fans here, obviously, you know a whole bunch more. We see McBain here looking very comfortable in this fight. Uh, did get some efficient experience to even get ready up to nuke so being able to go with the hybrid strats here with both edge and cane served up doing a ton of damage uh nerf on this first big bang so we didn't even have to eat a lot of damage from that and again the experience sufficient on rose would be at very healthy hp levels uh so even unnerfed big bangs are not going to be terribly scary for this team yeah the only person who's going to be worried about an unnerfed big bang is ridia uh everyone else is kind of like yeah, no, we're, we're just gonna we could just let it happen. Like, this is where you berserk your runners, your fighters up and just say, whatever happens, happens. <laughs> Put the controller down, walk away. Like, it, it should work. Out. Not quite those levels, but I respect <laughs> that. And as a man who is a very much connoisseur of the uh, the Drain Venger strats, that is exactly how I do my Zoroma <laughs> Yeah, with, with Drain Venger, yeah, you probably should just walk away at that point. It's gonna take a little while to finish. I have, actually. <laughs> Hey, I'll get you through the fight. But uh, McBain here wanting to get through the fight as fast as possible while also being safe. We'll go ahead and just keep good weapons on here and just zerk up and get the damage out. Excuse me, Drainvenger is a good pair of weapons. I will not have this slander against my boy Kane while I'm here. Okay, uh, it misses it misses the hybrid strats then. That's That was the mean problem. That's acceptable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
here. The hybrid strats being just both circling and magic, as we can see Nuke is putting out a lot of extra damage here, so every iteration through we're getting in a good chunk of damage here, so going to get through this serum is quite quickly here on my main side, where Rex Banner does find the news of yep, yeah, Ogallan here in the giant. Which is his final boss here, here first. Yeah, this is less than what you're excited to see here. You just look at this search for you look at these beamers, just like I would love you to have been anywhere else. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what you uh, are not a fan of. But you are also a fan of Second Grind, because this is going to be a 2,000 HP <laughs> Rydia when you're done here, the very, very minimum. There you go. Even Rydia won't have to worry about those on uh, Nerf Big Bangs and Rex Banner set. Uh, we see even White Cast coming out here from uh, uh, Rosa on McBain's side, so even harder here on the hybrid strats, getting more damage out that much faster. Yeah, you could if if you were counting damage, you could make this a little bit faster of a, of a fight. But in all honesty, uh, who counts damage when numbers go burr? Uh, I'm not here for counting. I'm here for the damage going out to the uh, Diablomas. And yeah, there it's coming out fast and furious, especially with Edge popping out 5k hits here. But however, that's the crack. That's the boom. That's the shake. And that is GG's to our winner of game one, Roger McBain. Time of one hour, 47 minutes, 51 seconds. And we are in fact joined by our first place finisher on stream, McBain. How you doing, my friend? I'm starting to do doing good now. The, a little bit of a uh, little bit of coming down after where that alt gauntlet was hiding. Yeah, and mostly everything else. I mean, I, I felt so behind, basically from the hook route till, till the end, really. So I will say, you actually were behind going down through the hook route. You're about a minute and a half behind at that point. Wow. Yeah, no, well, I figured. All right, so let's start talking about this seed. You, there was big divergence right off the hop. You and Rex went through two different ideas. He went through more boss checks than you. You went through your character checks. Why did you put priority on character checks versus the easy boss checks when you have a kitted out edge? And um, basically, it's the, the hook that started this. I wanted to see what I had, what gear I needed, really, as soon as I could. And um, so I would know how much to loot, which is, by the way, way too much. Loot Goblins Unite. Yep. And that's my chest, don't open it. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so yeah, you have that ability. You start seeing your characters, you don't find a white mage until you start getting toward deals. You have Rydia. What's your thought about your basic, your Kane, Edge, Sid, Rydia, and um, Edward party? That, that's kind of what you're looking at power-wise. How were you feeling before Rosa showed up? It was still not bad. I mean, I, uh, I mean, there, there's a lot of HP with this Sid, and, uh, you know, Cure Tree Strats is not a problem for me, and uh, there's always an Ashura that can show up somewhere for Rydia, and, uh, and there's always a Young that was ignored uh, in Missidia, so if I needed more HP, so I I'm comfortable with the cure tree strats. But yeah, you always want Rosa, especially with the even if uh, it's not perfect, uh, not being able to cast exit if you have to go to uh, somewhere, especially the lunar subterrain. It's uh, it's not fun to warp out of there. Yeah, and speaking of Lunar Subterrain, you left one thing. You left the um, the dark elf that was there yeah. that was hiding a key item. Uh, I assume if you've seen the the roll go through, did you um, did you feel like any time about going back and taking that fight in case you left something there, or was it always just like, nope, you're done there, you're gonna leave it alone? I saved it there in case. But I really, uh, I was done at that point. Uh, especially when I saw Element, I was like, you know, I, I, I feel so behind right now. I'm taking all the risks right now. I'm, I'm out of here. And uh, I, I took the, the, I really just took the Ogo Pogo because it's good XPI. Still had me grind. And then, so I was like, I'm just gonna take this fight and hope for something. And I got Baron Key, which basically saved me there, I guess. So yeah, uh, I, I just felt so behind that I, there was no way I was going back there.
so we're getting down to the last couple of key, uh, key item checks and nothing really fancy. You're really, really starting to kind of panic here. Uh, and actually, it looks like from the way that it rolls out here, Package was hiding the evil wall because that tower key, I don't believe, had the... Uh, I think we saw on the roll, did not have it. Uh, what were you kind of thinking when you're trying to look for your ninth, eighth, ninth key item uh, check and you're just not finding any of these, like, harp, package, tower key, baron key. Oh, yeah, at that point, I was uh, I was panicking a little, especially uh, forgetting CPU before going to the moon. So uh, at that point, I felt, I felt so behind that it was like, I'm just going to check everything that's, that I can check right now and hope for the best uh, and hope for a key item at the same time, and which, which I got one. Well, then I got the pen, I think, in Baron, but there was no point in checking at that point. Yeah, and you know what, again, so you, you went through Baron, you see Asura down there. Uh, yeah, we're, you found the last boss at the top of, uh, at the top of the giant. How are you feeling? Again, you're getting there. First boss, Rubiconte, pretty easy. And the next one you're getting is that. Yeah, I was pretty happy. And it was actually, I think I was even happier when I got the Ashra and Baron because with what I had left to check and the key item I had, I was like, oh, it's, I sure hope there's something here. And then I, that's why I checked Luca first, I, but. It's, uh, yeah, I was very happy to see it. And it gave me all the level I needed. Alright, so this puts you 1 and 0 above Rex Banner. Uh, you did not get the mystical tie that everyone in chat was really hoping for. So uh, I'm a little personally disappointed. However, there is the salty runback portion of that coming up tomorrow when you do your game too. Yeah, I'll share. Uh, how. Uh, how are you feeling going into game two with this uh, one game advantage? Um, I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm sure everybody feels better when you're ahead, but yeah, um, and uh, gives us. Uh, I'm sure the game is gonna be great. It's a we have some weird game with me and and Rex. It's always interesting. There's always things happening, even when we don't tie. It's still things happen. Speaking of things happening, again, thank you for checking the music, even though we had Rex Banner go check it on his end. Uh, again, really appreciate it. We always love seeing music play back in. Uh, Clopper, do you have any questions? Not much as on the seat. I think you covered that real well. Uh, just, I guess, any thoughts on approaching the next seat, or I guess the next race in a different way? Or what's your thoughts on how you're going to go into that one tomorrow? Definitely uh, try to uh, panic less and uh, loop less. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I basically do everything better. Uh, I mean, I guess I feel maybe uh, maybe I wouldn't have maybe feeling behind got me to uh, skip the good things at the end. But you know, it's it was very nerve wracking. So yeah, maybe something more uh, straightforward and would be great. For sure. Well, definitely. I think you did still play really well, and it turns out the uh, the page you made did turn out to work out for you in this one. So, uh, no, I'm definitely excited to see it. I think it'll be a really another good race. Two very talented runners going at it there. So, uh, when is that race? You are at eight. I think it's same time. Same hey, time. Perfect. May probably not say place. I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's definitely not. It is on Free Enterprise Prime, our home channel, which again, big shout out to RPG LV for letting us be showing off this race tonight on here. Uh, you guys have been great partners and we really do appreciate it. And again, Mc, uh, McBain, again, GG's on your finish. Excited to see game two and you have yourself a wonderful night and celebrate as you should. Thank you very much. Again, Mick Bain, first place at the time of 1 hour, 47 minutes, 51 seconds. While we were interviewing him, Rex Banner finished his race 1 hour, 55 minutes, 45 seconds, right behind 
GG's to him, and we actually still see, one, the boss uh, of Zoroba's falling down the screen, and two, we are joined by Rex. GG's. GG's. How are you folks doing this evening? Doing real well, thanks. I uh, put on a really exciting race there, uh, although it turns out to not, not quite work out for you there at the end, but definitely was extremely well played on your end. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on the seed, maybe starting there at the beginning, keep seeing that edge start. Uh, what goes through your mind and kind of sets up your early part of your routing there? Uh, with the edge start is just clear everything I can with basically keeping me to two characters so edge gets all the turns and then eventually look at the party. It sort of hurts if you don't end up with a darkness crystal or any way to do a slingshot because a bunch of your party is usually low level. But you can get so much cleared so much quicker without having to parry through four other turns. Very nice and seemed to work out for you getting through as you did get first underground. What was kind of, us, I guess, going towards that hook route? Was were you thinking of getting any extra looting done? Were you checking the boss? What, what was your plan for tackling that? Um, it was a bit of a check the boss sort of see. I had enough levels on Rydia to cast Leviathan twice, so I'm like, okay, I got enough for that at least. We can get through there. So we'll see with the bosses, as long as it's nothing too ugly, we should be fine. So seeing the guards, I had the coffins, I'm like, okay, this all is going to depend on what's at the king-queen spot. So, headed down, and then, yeah, we saw that lovely mum-bomb. Mm -hmm. So, but was able to get the blink up on edge and get through that. So, then the guards, I was hoping to get a few more life glitches off, but... Not being RA1 sure put a damper on that. Because I think we saw there, we were talking about that uh, earlier, you went down to battle speed 6. Was that with the goal of getting more life potions thrown out? Yeah. Usually, gotcha. if you're RA1, you can get three or four life potions thrown out there. But you have to apparently be RA1. I didn't realize it was that reliant on it. Gotcha. Good to learn some technique there. Uh, that did get you underground, and you were the first one under, underground there. Uh, we saw some pretty standard routing, it looks like, there until we got to the Darkness Crystal. Uh, you did do well there, getting through all, a lot of those bosses fast. At what point, or I guess it looked like you never really went into, say, face check mode. You still seemed willing to want to check all of your key items. Uh, what was the thought process behind that, and is there kind of any trigger you're waiting to hit before you're just going, okay, I'm only looking at bosses now, I don't care about the key items? Um, when I'm down to only missing like one or two spots and one of those not being Baron. I really don't like, um, not having Baron key as one of my missing items because there's two unknown spots in it. Like, you're lucky enough you know the first spot, but there's two unknown bosses hidden behind it. Where if you're missing like this one tower or package, there's only one hidden boss you don't know behind each of those. So, sure. yeah, that's usually more what I'm looking for for complete face check mode, or if I am only one boss away. It makes a lot of sense there on the logic there. I can really see that being like the high percent plays and paying off a lot of time, and just unfortunately did not work out for you in this seat. Nope, it didn't help. I forgot a few things. Like when I went down to do Luca, I forgot I had the pan. When I got the rat tail, I was a little upset that i had to deal with a boss that wasn't required because i had to run the rat tail out and i forgot i had the pan and to do that before heading back under uh, above ground so a few little mistakes i made but they could all be improved on sure and really up to that point it was just very excellent play and doing really really well uh handling through like all any of these say i mean this was the seed of mean punching bosses and you got through a lot of those very cleanly and showed some really good uh, strategies also nice work i think on multiple bosses we were very impressed with the odin and some other work so well done that odin has a little tricky i usually do that at one <laughs> and i forgot i dropped it to three so i'm like oh i got to delay a bit here oh well then very well done for doing that on not your normal battle speed uh overall very well played um got this anything you want to check with 
I just kind of want to echo the wonderfulness of you showing off one of best boys in Kane in doing Kane Destruct strats. Like, they are very hard to pull off, especially in places that are punchy and fast like that. You have, again, very nice heads up play. Very, very well done. And I'm excited to, excited to see you do a salty run back tomorrow and hopefully push this to three games. Well, that's the plan. We're aiming for about a good four or five games. We got to keep, uh, you know, our tournament history going proper, so... Oh, I, we can... I see. I was just trying to be nice to the admins, but if you want to choose that level of violence, <laughs> like, let's go for seven, man. <laughs> we're we're going to see, you know. We, we missed this opportunity, but we still have at least one. I'm aiming for at least two more chances to, you know, pull off our tournament history, so... Good. You got started nice and early in the week for game one, so you really could fit in six nice and easily. So yeah, there's still yeah, time. Day of the week. Look, I'm a hundred percent here for this. We got a double header on Sunday going to happen with you two. So you know what? As long as you can keep up with that schedule, Rex, uh, I am super excited for you and McBain to have the longest, for the record, for the longest tournament race period. Uh -huh. Yep, we're going to give it our best effort. But I can let you folks go. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you to Rybon for pushing the buttons. Thank you for Karma for that lovely seed. Thank you to Dothus and Klopfer for the wonderful commentary. And to everyone watching and supporting us. It, we couldn't do these if we didn't have everyone showing up to help support. So thank you guys so much. Uh, thank you and a big thanks to you for putting on such an excellent race today. I'm definitely looking forward to watching the follow-up tomorrow. Again, that was second place finisher Rex Banner, times one hour, 55 minutes, 45 seconds. Still a wonderfully run race. Don't ever knock uh, that how well that was. That race was a lot closer than it looked. Uh, that is all the races we actually have for today for Enterprise Wise. However, make sure you are here tomorrow for another action packed day. We are starting at eight o'clock again with, uh, sorry, six o'clock tomorrow with Frankie Bones versus Jay Brunter. Uh, they are going to be on Free Enter Prime or Free Enterprise One, as we like to call it, with Sheep Launcher and Deathlike on comms. And we're going to see a fantastic run there. Next, we will then have the Salty Run Back, as I was mentioning, uh, on Free Enter Prime as well afterwards, a few hours after it starts. We are going to have that race there with Martin Broadcloak and Tybalt the Gambler, two people who may have been involved in a possible tie situation before, but we're not going to say the quiet part out loud, as well as RPG Limit Break, our wonderful friends here being very fantastic and showing off yet another run of Deckard Smash versus Ikear with Vitasia and J-Mac the Librarian being the comms team for that. Uh, tonight, though, we do not have any other races. But fear not, uh, Cluffer, where are we going to send all these wonderful and fantastic Rand, uh, RPG fans? Oh, uh, let's see. If it's not a next race, I think we're heading off to... We are heading to Fossey uh -huh. Fern, actually, who's doing Purple Moon Flags. Again, thank you all of you for being here tonight. We hope that you enjoyed what we got to show off. Again, from the booth, I want to do a big shout out one last time for Rybon and Bad Karma for both pushing the buttons, keeping us honest on the key items, and for rolling this fantastic seed with required package and required giant. And again, to you one more time, Klopfer, for, for be joining me in the booth and being the power calm that you are, where I just get to continuously push my memes as much as possible. Big thanks to you. It was a lot of fun. Hope we can do this again. And thanks to everyone for dropping in today and enjoy the rest of your free enterprise watching. Don't spoil the race or you get the bonk. And trust me, those newspapers, they eventually hurt. <laughs>